am really, really not feeling all that good today. Yesterday, I felt like I was getting very sick after I got home from work. So before I went to bed, I took some NyQuil and uh, it helped me sleep. But right now, I'm extremely tired. Like I feel so drained. Like I don't have any energy to do much of nothing today, honestly. It's like this cold just came out of nowhere. And last week, I felt like I was getting sick also because my son was sick from school. But, you know, I was fine afterwards, but now I'm just like both like sick. But, you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. So today I wanted to give y'all an in-depth review of my 2017 Ford Transit low roof after 200,000 miles. But first, I actually surprisingly did get some um, orders on roadie today. Two of them actually, picking up from Walmart. So I have one going eight miles for 27, 28. And the other one is going six miles for 2611. We got about 15 minutes to get to the store. Let's go. Alright, we here. Oh, I can't breathe. Might have to move on. Code is zero, what was it, zero five nine two. Goes back a little bit. We got 12 minutes to the first drop. Let's go. All right, here at the first drop. Next drop is 18 minutes away. All right, second drop off. that was sticking up from somewhere don't even know how that happened and then some lady was actually coming out into the street and she actually pushed me while I was holding the TV I don't know what is up with people but this is why I hate delivering in the hood it's so rude all right y'all so we gonna get into this review of my 2017 Ford Transit 150 with the low roof so I originally bought this van with 168,000 miles give or take a few miles and right now we are sitting at 228,655 miles. And the reason you see these lights on is because I have the accessories on, not the engine on. So, how is this van? How have, has this van been to me? Well, honestly, this van has been almost perfect for me. So, we're going to address some things. You can probably see the cracks right here in the windshield. So, I guess I'm going to address that first since we're on that. 
this crack right here is actually from me because there was a bug in here and I was trying to kill it and I just like, hit it a little too hard and it cracked. So that's why that crack is there. It actually went from, started from here and it goes all the way down and it spread to that corner. Uh, this crack right here, let me see if I can get that on camera good. I don't know if y'all can see that, but this crack right here, uh, this actually wasn't me. This was from ice that fell off of the top of a bridge. So a crack in here and also right here. This one spread this way and this one spread all the way that way. So this crack is on the inside and that crack is on the outside. So the only problem I've had with the interior is this window switch. This is actually a replacement switch because my window switch went out and it stopped rolling down in this window, but that window was perfectly fine. So I went on Amazon, I found this for I think $15. All I did was pop it out, um, do the cords, put it back in and it works perfectly fine. So my windows work now on both sides. And that's pretty much it for the interior. I mean, we have good, uh, good storage space. Keep all my paperwork right here. I actually need to go through this and throw this out. Uh, cup holders, some holders right there, cup holders and stores down there. Little storage right there. That's where I keep all my junk and stuff. Uh, cup holder there. Most doors down there and there. Glove box. Decent size. I have a lot of stuff in this van. Alright, so let me put y'all on my chest so we can go outside. Let's turn that off. So, as y'all can see, we have the low roof van uh, van came like this I actually did get a replacement for it but someone hit my mirror again and it fell off so I'm just leaving that the way it is uh, all this damage you see right here well that right there it was bought like that also this logo is gone all this was already bought like that so the only problem I have with this engine-wise was, what's my dig Let me see. The only problem engine-wise I had with this was, I believe this cooling hose, this one right here, it had a leak and I just went to the mechanic to replace it. it. Cost me like $60 and that is it. I had no work done in the spark plugs. Uh, coolant's good, brake fluid is good. Actually, no, that's my break too, I think. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Yeah. Transmission, perfectly fine. And mind you, this van has 228,000 miles on it. And everything in here is perfectly fine, working condition. But I do have to, uh, like, get a, like, a some kind of tie so I can keep this from falling down there and getting caught in the fan because that, that's that's a no-no right there. That is a no-no. Go down the side. This door, perfectly fine. This right here. Now, I've had someone hit my van overnight and they actually hit it so hard that they pushed it onto the sidewalk. So this door doesn't open properly. Neither does it lock on the inside from my lock switch. That's broken, so I have to manually lock it this way. You can see inside, we got good space. This wire, this black wire right here, like the small one, I put that in there because I installed a, a backup camera. Even though it does have a backup camera that shows up in the, the mirror, I installed that one so that it always records in case of an accident. And I do have a link for this in my description below. Very good system, comes with a touchscreen mirror and it works perfectly fine. So this damage from the outside actually came in here and did all this damage. Wish my camera would stop turning off. So all this damage was from getting hit from the outside and it's actually canted in on the, uh, the wheel well but it still works. The only thing is these doors are very hard to close. 
See, it's not even closed right there. And you slam it to close it. Uh, I did get new tires when I bought it. I believe these sets were $800. I don't even know what brand they are. <laughs> Max and Miller. I think they're Cooper tires. I'm not sure. Yeah, anyway. So this is also damaged from that crash when that person hitting me. Uh, this was collateral damage from it. Yeah, and I, that guy smacked the hell out of my van and did all this damage. But my, my uh, backup camera still works. Only thing is this has to be held on by zip ties. I have a zip tie right here and one right here. I go into the middle and I go on the inside of the door. And all I did was pull this panel off and just, you know, pull the zip ties through, cut them off at the little nub, and that's it. So this is the camera I installed. Uh, it moves around, which is annoying whenever I have tall stuff in here and it wants to hit it. So I have to you know, turn my mirror on to readjust it to make sure it's in the correct position. And yeah, we have a uh, very, very good loading space. Only thing I wish really worked in here were the lights. Like this light right here doesn't work at all. The one that was over here actually ripped out from loading something. So that's unfortunate, but no, it didn't work anyway, so I don't really care about that. I did have some problems with this latch. Uh, it was actually very, very loose, and I had to come in here and unscrew it to reattach it. Actually almost lost a piece that it hooks onto, and it fell all the way down here, and it was a struggle to get the damn thing out. But it works just fine. So, I'm very fortunate to have not have a lot of damage from that crash because this was the side of the vehicle that actually went onto the sidewalk. Luckily, this tire wall is very large and it actually went straight over the sidewalk and didn't damage the rim, thank God. So all I have to do was go to my mechanic or my tire shop right up that's literally on the next block and they just put it back on and that was it. All right, I'm gonna open this up. Gas door right here. And if you guys are wondering what the capacity for this thing is, it's right here. Make sure it's on camera. This van can hold 3,643 pounds, including yourself. I weigh about 200 to 210 pounds, so it can hold about 3,400 pounds, which is why I take all those heavy ass pallets you see that um, Rody be having, and all those boxes from my Auro Plastic Shipper. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I mean, this van has been working perfectly. I probably should go get my spark plugs changed. Not due to anything that I noticed with the vehicle, just because it's over 200,000 miles and it's about time for it. This didn't come with any service records, so I don't know what the previous owner has done with it service-wise. But other than that, all the damage here is just cosmetic, except maybe for this wheel. I do have some noise from it while I'm driving at slow speeds, but that's, I guess that's probably due to uh, that crash, but it doesn't bother me too much. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, for a van like this, with all of this been through, it's still holding on, no rust, clean on the bottom, and it runs perfectly fine. I've only gotten my brakes changed on this on the the back wheels once because they worn down all the way to the back plate of the uh, the brake pad, which is very noisy. Do have to get the fronts changed. I could do it myself because I do have a jack in here. Only thing is the lever is gone. I don't know where it is. But if I come back, let me show you. Like under this, I do have a jack right there, but. We got a yellow jack right there, but I don't have the lever for it, so I might have to go find that. I do have a lot of garbage in here. I'm, I apologize for that. I gotta clean this thing out. And also, uh, gas mileage. So, honestly, this van actually gets better gas mileage than my uh, 2011 Acura MDX, which is odd for me because they both have the exact same displacement engine, 3.7 liters, but, uh, my uh, Acura does 
require premium, but I don't do that anymore because it's a waste of money. You know, I don't, I don't need all the power. And my wife drives it, so she doesn't drive like I do. But uh, it's a very, very fuel efficient vehicle. I can get a little over 400 miles on a full tank of gas. And something I forgot to mention is that I do have a little hole. Let me see right here. Don't know where that came from. And also the, uh, the pedals. Now this is something a lot of people overlook when buying vehicles, the pedals. If your brake pad, especially the brake pad, if your brake pad is worn down to the, the metal under here, that is a high mileage car, high mileage city car. Because obviously you, you do, you know, like sliding your foot off and on this will wear out this pedal very quickly. This pedal is really not worn down at all. So that lets me know that this van has been previously used for highway miles. And I believe this came from North Carolina, so it's highways down there anyway. But like I said, it's a very excellent vehicle. Do wish I had the, uh, the medium roof. Uh, parts for this are very, very easy to find and extremely affordable. As like I said, the coolant pipe in the engine bay, it costs $60 to fix. That was parts and labor, $60. So, and I believe my mechanic charges somewhere around $40 an hour. So, the piece only costs $20. And yeah, that's it. So, if you guys are ever in the market to get a cargo van, the Ford Transit, any model, Ford Transit, 150, 250, 350, high roof, low roof, medium roof, whatever, the ones with the 3.7 liter V6, I don't know about the, th the twin, but their twin turbo or turbocharged v6 i don't know about that one but the 3.7 liter v6 is damn near bulletproof i've had virtually no problems with this vehicle and it's extremely reliable i wouldn't even look at no dodge no nissans no mercedes not to pick on cars and cribs you know it's unfortunate that he's that he's had engine problems on a pretty much a brand new sprinter but Mercedes sprinters have a lot of problems. I've used them when I was working at FedEx Express. Every week, at least three vehicles had to get towed back to the station because something was wrong. I even had uh, a situation where I had to go help someone do their deliveries because their vehicle broke down in such an odd way. The uh, differential in the back broke somehow. So, the prop shaft or the drive shaft that you know is supposed to drive the back differential was just spinning every time you put it in a park it was just spinning and grinding against it it wasn't going anywhere i've never ever seen that happen on any vehicle before i've seen drive shafts come off but i've never seen drive shafts break the differential and for you guys that have absolutely no idea what i'm talking about let me just show you see this big hunk of metal right here this right here is the rear differential supposed to send power to both wheels on each side that pole right there is the drive shaft so when that sprinter it broke inside the differential so this was just constantly spinning just going and going and going and going and he wasn't going nowhere oh that is going to be it for today's video i'm still very very sleepy so i need to go home and get some sleep I made like what 50 dollars today so i'm glad i went out here and made something today so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, link to my mirror and other stuff you might find helpful is in the description below. We'll see y'all next time.